Hello guys, welcome back. Today we'll be looking into the next dynamic programming problem that is the coin change problem. Let's first see the problem statement. So the coin change problem given a value t uh, which represents the total sum. We need to find out the number of ways in which we can make total t cents if we have infinite supply of uh, the coins that are given in the set okay uh, just to make it clear here uh, in this example we have been given a total value total sum value of four and a set with three coins okay with values one two and three we need to find out the total number of possible combinations uh, where each combination is made up of uh, the coins that have been taken from this set okay so we need to find out all possible combinations where each combination will sum up to four okay the total given uh, sum okay so let's say here t is the total sum value that is four and we need to find out all those combinations which will total up to four okay so here uh, we can choose uh, all ones which will sum up to 4 or we can choose 1 plus 1 plus 2 or 1 plus 3 and so on okay so there are four combinations here so the output should be 4 all right as usual let's start with solving this in a brute force approach where we consider all the possible combinations and then try to solve the problem okay in a top down approach this is uh, similar to the subset sum problem that we have seen before but this is a different variation of it Okay, so I highly recommend you first uh, go through the subset sum problem before you reach here. All right, let's apply the same idea here uh, in code. Here, first thing is we identify the sub problems. Okay, what are the sub problems means? We identify the possibilities. What are the possible paths that we can take? And once we identify, we find the solution to those sub problems. Okay, so that is the approach, the top down approach. So here, uh, let's call our function. This is our function which returns the total number of possible uh, solution sets. Okay, total number of ways in which we can sum up to four. Okay, so here, our uh, function takes two arguments. One is the current item that we are looking at and the total sum, okay, total sum initially it's it is equal to t okay the given sum so initially we start by looking at the first element that is at the zeroth index and initially the total sum is the given value of t okay so the the total sum now what do we do we identify the sub problems okay as we have already seen the sub problem is one where uh, one of the sub problem is for each item that we look at, we decide whether to include that item or in another sub problem is we exclude that item. Okay, so we find the solution to both the sub problems. Okay, so just let's just do that by including what is the solution that we get. Okay, one sub problem is by including we call our function. Okay, the current item that we are looking at is uh, one. Okay, the first element here here we have two choices to take uh, include one in in the solution subsets and find the number of ways for all the remaining sum what will be the remaining sum remaining sum will be four minus one by including one uh, we need to find out the total number of ways to sum up to three from all the remaining elements okay so this is one choice the another choice is we don't include one in the solution set okay in the solution set for example if you consider this solution subset here we are not including one okay so that is another choice so let's uh, solve first find the number of ways for both the sub problems okay one sub problem is when we include uh, the current item another sub problem is when we exclude the current item okay so in this path, uh, when we include the uh, current item, what will be the uh, new value of sum? The new value of sum will be the remaining sum. Okay. By when we include the current item, we need to check uh, whether 
we can sum up to the remaining value of sum okay what is the remaining value remaining value is 4 minus 1 okay the current item is subtracted from the sum okay so that is the new value of sum now uh, to now what should be the value of i see i is the i is just the pointer to the current item that we are looking at okay initially we were uh, uh, i was pointing to 1 now once we included i if we move forward if we proceed to look at the second item then we will miss all those cases where we can repeatedly include one okay uh, see for example see when we in the inclusion choice when we included one in the uh, solution subset next time uh, to sum up to value three we again need to consider all the elements okay not just two and three we need to again remain we need to point at the same element again and we need to reconsider one okay so we can cover all the uh, other combinations where we can repeatedly include the uh, same element okay so this is uh, from this it is clear that we don't uh, move i to the next item we remain at the same position okay when we include one so here when we included one in the solution subset let's say uh, we need to reconsider one in the next possible combinations okay to sum up to three okay so to sum up to three the remaining sum we are reconsidering the same item again okay so that's why we are not moving forward on the other hand if we uh, look at the excluding path the exclu uh, exclusion choice here when we exclude the current item so if we consider the excluding choice in the solution set when we exclude the current item we don't include one and simply move on to look at the next item okay when we exclude the current item that means the sum will not change the sum is uh, still remains the same for okay totals uh, remaining sum did not uh, go down did not get reduced because we didn't include the item we excluded one okay from our solution set this is one uh, possible path okay this uh, this path will be able to cover those cases where one is not included okay for example this solution subset when we in x by excluding one we just proceed to look at the next item okay so these are the two sub problems that we have identified once we get the solution for both these sub problems see uh, the solution for this will indicate the number of ways in which we can sum up to the remaining sum okay sum minus array of i the number of ways in which we could sum up to three starting from the same element okay so this uh, is one sub problem another uh, path is by excluding the current item what is the total number of ways in which we can sum up to the same sum value what is the final solution final solution is the sum of all the possible ways right so final solution will be uh, the total uh, number of ways that we can get either by including the current item in the solution sets or by excluding the item all right guys before we get into the base condition let's just trace the way in which the recursive calls are being made so here we call our function initially with the pointer pointing to the first element that is one okay with the sum value of four and initially we make a uh, the choice where we include the current item what is the current item number one when we include it we uh, the remaining sum will be four minus one that is three okay and we remain at the same uh, element we don't move forward because uh, we need to handle those cases where we repeatedly include one okay next time again our function will call uh, will uh, go into the same including path and will uh, our function will be called with a decremented value okay and this continues until we uh, end up with a sum value of zero okay when the sum becomes zero then what does it mean it just means that by repeatedly including elements okay by either by including or excluding some of the elements along the way we have finally reached a point where the sum has reached zero that means by including one four times we have included the elements in such a combination 
where the uh, total they are all summing up to the initial sum value okay that is 4 okay so 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4 so that means we have uh, summed up to the uh, right value and the remaining sum will be 0 so this whole thing constitutes to one combination okay here uh, to sum up to value 4 there are multiple combinations and what the example that I just took is uh, representing only one particular subset okay this represents one particular subset okay so when the sum reaches 0 then what do we do we just return 1 okay because when the sum itself is 0 we return the number of ways okay number of ways of summing up to the given value or you can also think of it in this way okay since this is the base condition initially if our uh, sum value was zero if our problem itself is such that the sum value is zero then without including any coin that is with just an empty set we can have one empty set where the sum of all the elements inside that set will sum up to zero okay so that still considers as one possible way of summing up to zero okay so that is the base condition and the failure case let's look at the failure case so let's say uh, we have been given with a coin space of only zero okay but our total sum value was 100 okay by including zero how, however many number of times you can't sum up to that value so that is one condition where if our i goes beyond the array that is if our pointer goes beyond the current array so this can happen even when we have uh, valid elements okay when, whenever we explore that exclusion choice we keep on moving forward so when our pointer goes beyond the size of the array element we return zero okay so this is one case and the other uh, failure cases let's say uh, we have been given with coin of value 100 okay 100 and 200 but we are required to find a sum value of 5 so whenever we subtract uh, our uh, sum value remaining sum will become negative okay so here also the, we uh, won't get a solution we won't get a subset so those are the two uh, failure cases if our sum becomes less than 0 and we just return 0 okay here if we test our function we get 4 as the answer okay why 4 4 is the total number of possible ways in which we can sum up to 4 okay the total sum let's look at the time complexity guys here uh, for every time we call our function we are uh, making two more recursive calls okay so basically one call makes two calls two calls makes four calls four makes eight and so on this increases exponentially in powers of two okay so this will continue at max our uh, until at max our i reaches n okay not beyond that because after that point we are returning okay so the time complexity is 2 power n and the space complexity is constant space we are not using any extra space but here also if you uh, consider the stack space that we are using the function stack space that is used by all the recursive calls you can consider the space complexity as big o of n okay why n big o of n because at any point of time our function stack can have maximum of n function calls okay after n function calls anyway we are returning okay so that is the space complexity and as you might already have guessed we can definitely improvise on the time complexity here by doing top-down memoization okay what is top-down memoization we just uh, take a chunk of memory and uh, and once we find the solution for the given set of inputs we just store the solution in our memory okay and next time we we will just check if we have already saved uh, the solution for that particular inputs that means if we have already come across the same parameters to our recursive uh, function if that is the case then we just uh, return uh, from the saved cache okay so let's just apply that okay uh, we instead of directly returning we cache the result for the given 
combination of inputs okay what are the inputs inputs are i and sum to our recursive function okay just to represent all the possible uh, combinations i have taken two dimensional array one each dimension to represent the pointer and sum okay and we uh, first time we cache the result we actually calculate um, uh, the solution and we store the uh, solution in the memory okay so next time if our function is called with the same set of inputs okay how do we know if our function is called again we'll know if we check our memory okay if our memory has some value that is uh, greater than zero okay initially here uh, the memory is initialized with all zeros okay so if our memory has some value that's greater than zero that means we have actually stored the solution before so we don't need to recalculate this entire thing we don't need to remake all these recursive calls okay so we just return whatever we had stored before with just this small change guys we have reduced the time complexity to big o of n square okay well not exactly n square it's n into sum okay one dimension varies from the i varies from 0 to n and the sum varies from 0 to the given t okay n into t in the worst case we uh, we, we will come across all possible values of i and sum whose bounds are from 0 to n and 0 to t. Okay, this is the top-down approach. Now, before we move on to the bottom-up approach, let's just transform this uh, solution in a reversed manner. Why reversed manner? Because in the bottom-up approach, the base conditions will be in terms of the smallest values okay since we will be starting from the smallest sub problem the base conditions will be in terms of the uh, smallest elements okay so here in the top down approach instead of uh, looking at the first item let's start by looking at the last item okay uh, let's uh, instead of moving forward let's move backwards so by doing this, what we do is uh, instead of moving forward, we move backward. We start from the last element. Okay, we start from the last element and we make the inclusion and exclusion choice for this particular element and then move backwards. Okay, we are, the problem is same and the solution is also same. It's just the direction in which we are moving is different. Okay. So why is this helpful? This is helpful because now our base condition is different. Okay. What is the base condition? Base condition is we'll check instead of uh, instead of checking if our i moves beyond the array, we'll check if our i becomes i points to an element that is still lesser than the first element. Okay. If my i becomes less than zero, that means that is the failure case. Okay. Now here if you observe the main reason uh, we are doing this transformation is all our base condition is in terms of the lowest numbers okay we are checking if i is less than 0 sum is 0 sum is less than 0 all these numbers are analogous to the smallest uh, problem okay so this will help us in a lot of uh, other problems also when we transform it by uh, starting from the last element by starting uh, from looking at the last element and then move, moving on to the first element we are making sure that it's very easy to convert the top down approach into bottom up approach directly okay and this also produces the same result that is 4 in the next video let's look into the bottom up approach and uh, we'll be continuing with how to kind of convert this top down approach into bottom up approach directly that's it for this video hope you guys found it useful if you did please like share and don't forget to subscribe see you guys next time